Don, this has been a wonderful focus on amending the Apostles' Creed. I want to review it. You can give me a grade at the end, see how well I do. Yes. Just to make sure that I've got a good understanding so our audience has a good understanding. Our Lord, after he rose up from the dead, had a key 40-day period yes. with his disciples. He didn't do micro-teaching. He did mega-teaching. He began to take the Old Testament and from that proved two mega themes. Yes. The first was not that he was the politically reigning Messiah, but was to be a spiritually reigning Messiah, a suffering Messiah. Then he began to preach mega theme B, that the Great Commission really began in Genesis 12 and began a theme that was to be laid for the course of his people and the church to lay that foundation down and that uh, he repeated it five times using repetition as an attention focusing device. Five times for three patriarchs, mm -hmm. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Helping us to see what's really important in the very beginning of the story. Yes. His desire to reach all nations. The disciples, the apostles, yes. had those two major themes embedded in their hearts by the teaching of Christ so that when Christ ascended into heaven, what he said in Acts 1-8 wasn't the key principle. They already had it as a major teaching. It was merely a review. Yes. But that was the teaching that the church in the early days started out with. Because Jesus said, after he opened their minds to understand those themes, you are witnesses of these things. And being witnesses of that, the gospel began to expand exponentially yes. all around the Mediterranean area. Three types of exponential growth, not only numbers, but churches and cultures as well. Yes. And after 250 years after the day of Pentecost, something interrupted that exponential growth. Yes. What could have taken the gospel up to the Vikings over and down into Canada and the eastern shores of America, what could have taken it down to Africa, what could have gone into what's now Saudi Arabia or over to what is now today Turkey and China and Japan over the western side, something happened that interrupted that growth. Yes. That was... Constantine, declaration of Christianity being the coming, the official religion, money poured into the church, wealth came in, we began to not worry about the Great Commission, but rather what's our budget? Persecution stopped. Persecution stopped. That was a lot easier, a much, uh, much easier gospel to preach, and as a result, the cutting edge was lost. And some of the early fathers wanting to maybe, shall we say, justify it, would that be a good word? began to put together creeds, but they left out the one second part of the mega themes. They included the first, yes. but left out the second. Yes. And as a result of that, those creeds that we use today that I recited as a child were the foundations for theology that's been set down for centuries in the church. Yes. And now what you're proposing is an amendment. Yes. Let's read that amendment one more time. We'll bring it up full on the screen. It says mm -hmm. these words. After he rose from the dead, we would insert, he commissioned his church, beginning with the apostles, to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem and Judea, but by no means ending there. Yes. Don, what a change that would have had in my life if as a child I realized that that's what we should be doing. Yes. What a change it would have had for millions of children and adults, pastors, theologians, all across the board if that one phrase had been added in. Yes. Do you think it'll ever be added in? Do you think it'll ever be amended? Uh, I think more and more Christians will begin to catch on. It's got to be put in there. It belongs. I don't know how long it will take, but I'm looking forward to the day when this will be officially added as an amendment to the Apostles' Creed. And it could be fitted into the other creeds as well. And Bob, I want to tell you something. Years after I went that first time to that part of southern Texas and saw the No Great Commission Baptist Church, mm -hmm. I was invited back there again with my second wife, Carol Joyce. And so uh, we looked in the yellow pages to see in the church section, was there a church named the great, No Great Commission Baptist Church still listed mm -hmm. in that city. It wasn't there. And my wife said, honey, it's out of commission. 
<laughs> well, you have been with Don Richardson studying, amending the Apostles' Creed in deep, a series that helps us get into God's heart in a fresh new way. Don, thank you so much. This concludes our fourth focus. We'll have many more in the future, but thank you for being with us. May God use it to get us all more active in the second part of the mega theme. Yes, indeed. Taking his glory to all nations.